Hey, Brandon Lewis here. Did you know that there are five types of painting businesses? Now, you may think there are more, and maybe even I do, but to keep it simple, I'm going to say there are five types. And, I, and there are going to be five types based upon the 2,500 hour-long business assessments that I've conducted. So what do I do on these business system um, diagnostic calls that would lead me to believe that there are five types of businesses? Well, the first thing I do is I get to know how they got started in business, how long they've been in business, what the professional background is. From there, we look at um, what type of business they run. Is it residential repaint, commercial repaint? Is it residential new construction? Is it commercial new construction? Something in between. Then we look at macro metrics, how profitable is their business. Then we get into operations, staffing, production rates, job costing, what their office looks like, what type of personnel they have, uh, how they equip and run projects uh, from the field and in the office, how do they empower crew leaders, how do they incentivize them, how do they pay them, what's their charge rate, what's their pay rate. Then we get into client reactivation, client retention, sales processes from pre-positioning, presenting, post-positioning, and follow-up net new lead generation, time management. I mean, it's quick. It's fast-paced. And when I get through these diagnostics and I sit down with somebody, I've got a really good picture of what their painting business looks like. And I know what needs to be fixed, uh, where the biggest problems are, where the largest missed opportunities are, and in which order we need to tackle those things in order to improve their business. And so when you do anything... Uh, just like you do every day in your career, if you do things over and over and over and over again and it's the same type of specialized work, after a while you start seeing patterns emerge. I kind of um, equate it to or compare it to when it rains real hard on a parking lot. Well, a parking lot, you'd think, well, all the rain is just equally distributed. But no, when it really starts raining, you start seeing where the water flows. And, and that's where the commonality is. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So the first type of business that I encounter, and it's the one that I most love to work with, and those are the triplers. What is a tripler, according to me? A tripler is a business that has been in business probably three or four years or longer. They've got a client list they've never communicated with. Their sales system is basically a introduce yourself, make small talk, um, tell somebody you're going to email a PDF, maybe call them or email them a couple of times. That goes on for a week and a half, and then you go on to the next thing. Uh, sales process, they uh, don't understand production rates. They don't have job costing in place. They are making less than $100,000. Now, less than $100,000 or less than maybe $120,000 if you make $50 an hour and you just paint by yourself and you uh, work 2,000 labor hours, not counting the money you should make on your materials, that's $100,000 if you charge 50 bucks. If you charge 60, it's 120. So, I mean, when you paint for a living, just about anywhere in the United States, you should at least make 100 grand. A lot of people don't, and then some people do make, make that, that amount or maybe a little better. Um, and so, and they don't do operational marketing, they don't have any B2B referral relationships. Their, loot, their, their profit margins on their jobs are low, and it's not because they don't have the work, and it's not because they don't have the painters, and it's not because they don't have the clients. It's just all the business system stuff is just missing. And so within about 90 days, if they'll do what I tell them to in the order that I tell them to, they can triple their monthly income compared to last year. So it's like if you started in January... By March, maybe at the beginning of April, you could look back and say, okay, I made X in March of last year. I made 3X in March of this year. So these are called triplers. They're the easiest ones to deal with. I can get the, I can get the, the best outcome for them very quickly. And it's usually like an owner, an assistant, or maybe just an owner, or maybe an owner, an assistant, and an estimator. Usually you have two or three people in the office uh, and then the rest are painters. Easiest, easiest category uh, that I work with, the ones I enjoy really working with the most. The second group of people that I work with are people that have large sales, like a million, two million, three million, but their profit margins are itty bitty. 
Like they may be running a $2 million painting business making $200,000 a year, which is about a third of where they need to be. So these are hard. They have the same fundamental problems as the triplers, same fundamental problems, but the problem is they've got a lot of direct reports. They may have an operations manager, an operations assistant. They may have a salesperson or two. They may have a couple people in the office, maybe three. Sometimes they're top heavy, sometimes they aren't, but these are uh, tougher to turn around because somebody else has to implement the systems. Like your operations manager has to do the production rates and the job costing, and he has to uh, put in the scheduling and the project management system from the um, office side, and then he's got to use the ultimate crew leader packet for the crew leaders and get them to do that, and then you got to run your crew meetings a little bit different way, and then you got to put a save labor bonus program in place. And it's hard for owners to hold their staff people accountable to do these things, and then the, the, the owner also, in many cases, kind of has to learn it himself well enough so that he knows that his staff are actually doing what he has assigned them to do and that they're following the process that has been recommended and it goes otherwise they can just kind of bs you and sometimes you have to hold well number one you have to hold people accountable but sometimes you got to fire people maybe people that have worked for your company 5 10 15 years it's emotional and it's difficult so i help these types of companies routinely it's just a little slower it, it tends to to take them longer to get something done, longer to make a change in a bigger company, even though you've got more people and more resources. It's counterintuitive. You'd think you got more people, more resources, you could move quicker. Uh-uh. Slower. Unless you got a certain type of, of business that for whatever reason, um, people do listen to what the owner has to say, but the owner just didn't know what to tell them, didn't know how to lead them, didn't know that they had issues in their business that were causing them to be so low profit. Okay, it's a second type of, of business I work with. Third type of business I work with are startups, and I've worked with more startups in 2022 than at any other time uh, in the eight years that I've ran the Painters Academy. And these are people that just, you know, they're uh, a year in business or less. Maybe they hadn't even started their business. Maybe they're six months in. It's not very much. And these are difficult to work with as well because, number one, they, they typically don't have much money. You know, it's, it's difficult to get a painting business up off the ground and doing it wrong. It's not easy doing it right. With startups, there's just a whole lot you got to do. I mean, there's a whole lot you got to do. You got to develop your sales process before you have the first client. You have to develop your production rates and your method of job costing. You got to go out. And, and recruit multiple subcontractors, or if you paint yourself, you've got to have, find enough work for you, and then you got to get a helper, and then you've got to paint, but then you've also got to do this other stuff. you got to go make referral relationships. You've got to find uh, marketing methods that work. You've got to launch your website, preferably a few months in advance of you going to market so you can start climbing the ladder. You've got to assemble social proof. Now, these are all the things that, that you need to do if you do it right. Now, most people just kind of walk out the door and start painting, right? They don't look into business systems. They think the money's going to be made from the paintbrush. They don't know how to price their stuff. They don't know if they've made money on the projects that they've painted or at what amount of money they have made per hour. They don't know what their profit margins are. They don't know how to, to manage or lead people that they might hire. They don't have systems and checks and balances in place to maintain high customer satisfaction with if they're using subs or if they're using W-2s. So this is the startup, right? And it's kind of like um, when you know what it takes to do something the right way and you know how you would do it if you were going to do it again from scratch, it, it's a little overwhelming because there's just a lot to do. But Having a lot to do and launching properly means that you'll be much further along year one, year two, year three than your average painting business. It means that your risk is reduced. It means you get to profit, profitability quicker and stability quicker. It's really the right way to do it, but rest assured, I mean, it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And then there's the hopeless. This is the fourth category, the hopeless. I know it all, but I'm broke. And these are people that want to get on the phone with me for whatever reason, and I, I don't know why. 
And every time I make a suggestion or uh, let them know that this needs to be done a different way or that something is missing, they want to argue with me. And they want to make excuses. And what is it? Ben Franklin said that a man uh, that is good at making excuses is seldom good at anything else. And these pe are people that typically I'll get about two-thirds of the way through the call, and I, I just try to convince them that this is not the program for them. Because there's a difference between people that make a lot of money in painting and people that, that make very little. When I suggest improvements, changes, modes of doing things differently, concepts, tools, systems, to people that, are, uh, that make money or that are about to make a lot more money, they go, well, how could I do that? Well, what would that look like? Well, when you did it, would you do this? Now, if I do this, will I have this happen? Well, when, when that happens, what do I do? Like they immediately start to take the advice and grapple with it and try to like almost like fix it like a Rubik's Cube. Well, how could I? They start, you can see the wheels start turning. They ask a lot of questions. They immediately start trying to figure out how to get it done. People that are broke and poor... When I suggest things like, well, I don't know if that would work. Well, I don't think so. But my, you know, my area is different, Brandon. And you know, well, here our customers are well in, in this market. And, and well, my experience tells me, and I said, but we know that how you're doing it is not working. Like that's the one thing you know. You've been doing this 10 years. You just told me all your numbers. This isn't working. Yeah, but blah, blah, blah. These are the hopeless people. And I can't help them. And <laughs> the, what is it? Uh. I can make the eagles fly higher, but I can't turn turkeys into eagles. Can't turn chickens into eagles either. And so I don't lose sleep over it. And I try to get these people away from me as quick as I can uh, because they can't be helped, because they won't help themselves. Um, what they want is to mentally alleviate themselves from the responsibility of, of, of failure. They're failing their family. They're failing themselves. But they, rather than to do anything different or hard or challenging, especially if they have a uh, history of starting something and then stopping it, they got to kind of go through the motions of trying to improve, but they don't really want to do the work to improve. And so they can't be helped. And then you have these folks. This is the last group that I run to. And this is, this is a rare occurrence. Exceptions of excellence. Uh, and then there's the old saying is the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And it's kind of true. Um, or as it says in the Bible, um, to much who is given, even more will give abundantly. And from those that have little, even it may be taken away. That is the way of the world. So you will, I will often get on the phone with somebody and it's like, your operations are kick ass. Your sales process is kick ass. Blah, blah, blah. We'll go through the list. And they're just firing on almost all eight cylinders, and they're doing things really well. Like, I mean, I'd give them like a B plus or sometimes an A minus in every category, but then there will be like one or two things typically where they can make a lot more money that are completely missing, but the rest of their business is just going freaking gangbusters. These are people that tend to be very smart, very dedicated, very serious about their business, very inquisitive. Uh, this isn't the first time they've gone outside of their own head to seek and find information. So these people are already making a lot of money, and they're doing well. And if they didn't do anything with me, they would still make a lot of money. Things would be fine. The, the world's not falling. Now, some people, like the triplers, like I try to get those people to join because I'm like, you'd be an idiot not to join. You're just going to freaking, you're broke. This is not good. Same thing with, with the other category. you got a big business, low profits. But these are people often that have very good profits. I mean, they're really, they may only be missing one or two business systems, like completely missing, which is there's always usually a blind spot in a business. And maybe of all their business systems, there's they could do 20% better, 10% better. And to my surprise, and it shouldn't really surprise me, the people that need the help the least are the folks that take it the quickest because they just want to get a little bit better, just a little bit better all the time, just get a little bit better. So they need the help the least. They need the education and the coaching the least, but they're the first ones to say yes to it because that behavior of saying yes to it previously that has led to them being as rich as they are and to performing as well in the industry as they do, they just keep repeating that behavior 
gathering that information, improving their systems, finding new ways to do things, seeking out counsel, and they do well. So those are the five types. Triplers, big sales, low profits. We got the know-it-alls. What else? I'm forgetting them. And startups. And then these folks that just excel. Okay? Now, if you have yet to register for the uh, Painters Academy Painting Profit Summit, it's the last weekend in January. It's about a month away as I record this. We have virtual tickets. We have live tickets. If you are in any of these five categories, except for the hopeless category, <laughs> unless something changes, if you're in the, any of the four categories, except for the, the uh, any of the four categories, um, excluding the hopeless category, then you want to look at this because you will find people that are in the excellence category or that really are, are beginning to become triplers or are beginning to increase their profitability or turn a large company around or startups that know you don't want to start your business the wrong way because it's hard enough as it is. PaintersAcademy.com slash summit. Uh, we'll have excellent speakers. You'll work in peer groups. We have a wonderful pre-day, fantastic receptions, awards ceremony. It, it just drives me crazy that more people don't surround themselves with other folks trying to figure out how to fix their business. It perplexes me. It's not the kind of thing that I've ever done, but I do well. And, you know, people that do well tend to do even better. And I think you should get into that category as quickly as you can. PaintersAcademy.com. If you don't have anything else or know anywhere else to start, I'll show you this here. we got this five keys report for finding success in an uncertain economy. Pages after pages, pages after pages, page after page of fantastic information about what it really takes to make money even when your government is trying to uh, do everything they can to wreck the economy and you still have to make a living for your family and keep your painters painting. How do you do that and still be profitable? It's all in this report. And then finally, if you just need help, I just need some help, Brandon. I'm, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Email me, brandon at paintersacademy.com or 423-800-0520. I am busy as a bee this time of year. I've been talking to lots of painters. Uh, we are bigger than we've ever been, uh, helping more people than we've ever helped. And I don't know what's in the air or in the water, but apparently uh, when the economy gets a little rocky and you've been doing this as long as I have, people start seeking you out to help. And I'd be happy to help. And finally... I thought I had a slide there that was going to tell you, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I hope you and your family have the best 2023 ever. And if I can help you make it a little bit better, I'd love to do it. Love you, mean it. Take care, guys. Talk to you next time.